The Morgan Report with David Morgan. David Morgan with you with the weekly perspective, week ending 24 March 2017. Well, I thought on the money, metals, and markets today, I would start out with something that is really in front of a lot of people, especially those that uh, get most of their news out of the internet. And of course, that is Bitcoin. You can hardly go anywhere without uh, hearing about Bitcoin if you travel in the circles that I do. So this is a very interesting article I'm pointing out for everybody, and that is a single Bitcoin transaction takes thousands of times more energy than a credit card swipe. Obviously, like all of my updates on the weeklies, I will not read it to you. But what is interesting is this underlined sentence that each Bitcoin transaction represents roughly enough electricity to power 1.57 American households for a day. I had no idea until reading this article. Uh, maybe someone can comment that uh, this is bogus. I don't think it is. I went through it fairly carefully before I decided to put it at the beginning of the video. And of course, I also know from the information that I gather daily that there is some type of split going on in Bitcoin and the two uh, differing, I guess, philosophies about it. And I know part of it has to do with the speed of transactions. So I'll leave it at that. And moving on to the gold market, I picked this up from Bay Street. Billionaires are cornering the gold market. Talks about smart money. He defines smart money as people that have more than a billion dollars to invest. And one that we all know, George Soros, whose net worth is estimated at $25 billion. And Drunken Miller, $4.4 million. Paulson, etc., are into the gold market. Well, what a surprise. I think we already knew that. Talks about China. And Soros believes that China's economy is poised to crash after years of sky-high growth. And then I'll add sky-high growth based upon the Keynesian model of you can borrow yourself into wealth. So it's an interesting article, uh, and I suggest if you care to, to read the whole article. And taking a brief look at the uh, fringe of the energy sector, and of course, that is the fracking story. Are banks about to derail the new U.S. shale boom? Just when international oil benchmarks are sliding down, banks are preparing to review the credit lines of United States exploration and production companies. You can read the article here. There's a lot of debate around this. Art Berman did an excellent article that I put on our Twitter feed that you can read. But if you really go into the numbers, as we do at the Morgan Report on the resource companies, a lot is off balance sheet and that type of thing uh, that just, let's call it creative accounting. But if you really get into the numbers and you look at the truth, uh, this is marginal at best. And going a bit further, the Canadian solar is feeling the bite of falling solar prices. This is outside of conventional energy, obviously. And even here, Canadian solar says that the company finished the year well behind on revenue due in part to the massive cost declines that have been seen in the global solar industry. So pretty much across the board, things are contracting. Sovereign Man this week put out an article, the new bubble is even bigger than the subprime fiasco. Simon Black does some very good work and I'll just say that uh, without reading the article, talking about subprime and how big that was, he goes into the student loan program. And of course, in that situation, there's no collateral whatsoever. A lot of subprime at least had some type of real estate backing it up, overpriced and as illiquid as it was. <clears throat> so this is a very interesting article, and this is something that comes to the fore now and again, that the sub, uh, excuse me, the student loan debt is something that is rather significantly large, and the default rate's over 11%. And one of my favorite topics, beating up on the equity market and the bond markets. A record number of fund managers say U.S. equities are overvalued. I've been saying for quite some time, both to the public domain and our website members, that uh, the stock market was in a distribution pattern for a very long time. And then we do what's called the mark up, which allows the pros to go short. And we've seen a pretty significant fall off on the triple Qs, the the SPOOs, the DJI, whatever large metric you want to look at, we've had pretty significant sell-offs 
and I think it's the beginning. I do believe that we are going to see lower stock prices over the next several months than higher. And of course, what David Stockman brought to the attention of almost everybody with the debt ceiling being reached about a week ago, it doesn't stop everything, but it does mean that the $20 trillion limit will be reached. And once it is, that it has to be voted to increase it. And this could cause a lot of political posturing and who knows where that will carry us, but certainly it will be probably a bigger incident than what we've seen in the past. So we can brace ourselves for that. And it may turn out to be not such a big deal. We'll have to see. And to give you a little silver news, as I try to do on every weekly perspective, the silver jewelry industry in the United States was strong in 2016, with 62% of jewelry retailers reporting increased sales, according to a survey conducted on behalf of the Silver Institute. So this is something that you can go through at your leisure. And it's interesting to note that um, silver jewelry demand uh, maintained during the hol holiday season greater than any of the others, diamonds, bridal jewelry, gold jewelry, or platinum, of course. And you can get a copy of this by going to the silverinstitute.org website and downloading the complete report if you wish. That's going to conclude this week's weekly perspective. I'll be back with you next week.